back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. In honor of the New England Patriots winning the Super Bowl last night, albeit in an ugly game, I'm going to be reading a poem by the man who Harold Bloom called the archetypal New England poet. And that, of course, is Robert Frost. He was born in 1874 and died in 1963. He received four Pulitzer Prizes for poetry, was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal, and was named Poet Laureate of Vermont in 1961. You probably know him best for his famous poems like Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening and The Road Not Taken and perhaps Mending Wall or After Apple Picking. But the poem that I'm going to read today is called The Woodpile. It's something of an earlier poem for him. He wrote it in 1912, February of 1912, according to an article in The Atlantic, which you can find online in their soundings column. And this is how it goes. I'll just get right into it. Out walking in the frozen swamp one gray day, I paused and said, I will turn back from here. And now I'll go on further, and we shall see. The hard snow held me, save where now and then one foot went through. The view was all in lines, straight up and down of tall, slim trees, too much alike to mark or name a place by so as to say for certain I was here or somewhere else. I was just far from home. A small bird flew before me. He was careful to put a tree between us when he lighted and say no word to tell me who he was, who was so foolish as to think what he thought. He thought that I was after him for a feather, the white one on his tail, like one who takes everything said as personal to himself. One flight out sideways would have undeceived him, and then there was a pile of wood for which I forgot, and let his little fear carry him off the way I might have gone, without so much as wishing him good night. He went behind it to make his last stand. It was a cord of maple, cut and split and piled, and measured, four by four by eight. And not another like it I could see. No runner tracks in this year's snow looped near it, and it was older sure than this year's cutting, or even last year's or the years before. The wood was gray, and the bark warping off it, and the pile somewhat sunken. Clematis had wound strings round and round it like a bundle. What held it, though, on one side was a tree still growing, and on one a stake and prop, these latter about to fall. I thought that only someone who lived in turning to fresh tasks could so forget his handiwork on which he spent himself, the labor of his axe, and leave it there far from a useful fireplace to warm the frozen swamp as best it could with the slow, smokeless burning of decay. There's an essay called Hawthorne and Frost, The Making of a Poem, from back in the 70s, I believe. A book of, there's a collection of essays on Frost, and in, in that essay, which is by J. Donald Crowley, he notes that Frost once said, quote, calculation is usually no part in the first step of any walk. And that is, the best way to go for a walk is to not know where you're going. And... In many of Frost's poems, he's walking somewhere, and there seems to be sort of an aimlessness to to his walk, there, that he has no particular place or destination or goal in mind. He's just out exploring. And as he's exploring, as in uh, The Road Not Taken or Stopping in the Woods on a Snowy Evening, you have to make a choice. You have to make a choice of what, what's the next step you're going to take, where are you going to turn, where are you going to go. And the choice that you make is going to, quote, make all the difference, right? So here we have another walker. This is a, an aimless walker, out walking in the frozen swamp one gray day. Frost is, of course, a master of mood, and I love how that one line sets the mood up for the whole poem. Out walking in the frozen swamp one gray day. That's such a typical Frost line because it's simple. Um, there's nothing trying to trick you. You know, it's straightforward but so much full of mood and tone that it, that it sets the precedent for the rest of the poem. It gives you a sense of what you're getting right away. And then, of course, the, the immediate question is, do I turn back and go home? No, no, no I'm going to keep going. Well, we'll see what happens. And that seems like such a key part of all of Frost's work. But it also seems like it's what he's doing when he's writing a poem in some ways. We shall see what happens next. That's not to say that Frost doesn't 
uh, revise, and he's not very careful with his language, but there is a sort of wandering sensibility about his poetry. Not in a sense of um, lack of clarity, and not in a sense that he doesn't use his images to suggest other images and have a purpose about them. But as, as readers, there is an, a wandering nature to his poetry that we have to be willing to sort of fall into. There's an adventure that his poems take us on. And if we're not up for that adventure, then we're not going to get everything that he's doing. He was a master of subtlety. Um, and I think this is a classic example of he's taking us on an adventure, uh, not just in his walk, but in the way that one idea suggests another idea, the way it takes us from one idea to the next, and the way it offers us so many questions and things to think about. Uh, one of the worst ways, I think, to read Frost is to constantly be looking for answers to what he's trying to do. What is it that Frost is trying to say is probably a question to ask of Robert Frost's poetry way down the line, because the first thing he has to do is be willing to go on the adventure with him uh, and to settle into the images and see where they take you and what they suggest. Um, so I don't love saying, well, this is what Frost is saying and trying to do here. You know, there's just so many great images in this poem to, to have with you as you're going on this adventure with Robert Frost. So that's all I'm going to say about this poem for today. But I love Robert Frost, uh, and uh, I love this poem, because I think that it is uh, quintessential to the way he, he seems to think about poetry and the experience that he's offering us. It's an archetypal poem, to use the word that Harold Bloom used in describing Frost as the archetypal New England poet. Also, begrudgingly, congratulations to all those New England Patriots fans out there. Uh, but here we go. Here is The Woodpile by Robert Frost one more time. Out walking in the frozen swamp one gray day, I paused and said, I will turn back from here. No, I'll go on further, and we shall see. The hard snow held me, save where now and then one foot went through. The view was all in lines, straight up and down, of tall, slim trees, too much alike to mark or name a place by, so as to say for certain I was here or somewhere else. I was just far from home. A small bird flew before me. He was careful to put a tree between us when he lighted, and say no word to tell me who he was, who was so foolish as to think what he thought. He thought that I was after him for a feather, the white one in his tail, like one who takes everything said as personal to himself. One flight out sideways would have undeceived him. And then there was a pile of wood for which I forgot him and let his little fear carry him off the way I might have gone without so much as wishing him good night. He went behind it to make his last stand. It was a cord of maple, cut and split and piled and measured four by four by eight and not another like it I could see. No runner tracks in this year's snow looped near it and it was older sure than this year's cutting or even last year's, or the years before. The wood was gray, and the bark warping off it, and the pile somewhat sunken. Clematis had wound strings round and round it like a bundle. What held it, though, on one side was a tree, still growing, and on one a stake and prop, these latter about to fall. I thought that only someone who lived in turning to fresh tasks could so forget his handiwork on which he spent himself, the labor of his axe, and leave it there far from a useful fireplace to warm the frozen swamp as best it could with the slow, smokeless burning of decay. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. Be back tomorrow with another one.